Hey everyone, this is Kirsten Waters and I'm the Digital Manufacturing Technical Manager here at CAD Micro Solutions. Today we're going to talk about fillets on our part model and how to program those using 2.5 axis and 3 axis operations uh, all while inside SOLIDWORKS CAM. So as you can see here, I have a part before me that has two fillets, um, one around the po interior pocket and one around the exterior boss. So let's go ahead and start with our 2.5 axis toolpaths. So we're going to have to define these features interactively. And the first thing we're going to have to do is create a new mill part setup. Inside the command manager, under setup, I'm going to select mill setup. And I'll select my top face of my part to reference that. Um, I also want to just confirm that my machining orientation is in the right direction. Everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and I'll press OK. Now we're going to start with our interior fillet. So the first thing we'll do is we'll right click that mill part setup and we'll add a new 2.5 axis feature. Because this fillet is associated with a pocket, our 2.5 axis feature type is going to have to be pocket as well. And for the first selection, I'm going to select the line directly below the end of the fillet. So this guy right here. Inside of my edge selection, I want to make sure that convert to loop is selected. Next, I'll click end condition, and I'm going to select the top face of my part in order to define that 2.5 axis feature area. As you can see, it's now represented by this dark blue. For strategy, I want to make sure that I pick any strategy that's going to give me a, a contour mill toolpath. We are going to update the tool afterwards. Um, also, one thing to point out, I can see from my end condition that um, this fillet is indeed a, a quarter inch fillet from my depth. So I can go ahead and I can press OK. So we have our circular pocket feature and next we want to create a feature so that we can cut the exterior fillet as well. So once again, I'm going to right, mill part, right click on mill part setup 1, select my new 2.5 axis feature. And instead of pocket, I'm going to select boss as my feature type. Once again, I want to have my edge selection convert to loop, and I'm going to select the bottom edge below that fillet. I'll click my end condition, and I'll select the top face as I did before. And I can see my visual in dark blue of my feature. Also, I can see I have a 3 8 fillet. I'll make sure that I have my finished strategy, which is going to give me that contour mill toolpath, and then I'll press OK. So now we have our two features created interactively, and we need to go ahead and generate the operation plan so we can edit those contour mill toolpaths. So while inside the SOLIDWORKS CAM feature tree, I'm just going to right click my mill part setup one, and I'm going to select generate operation plan. Now you can see that I've jumped over into my SOLIDWORKS CAM operation tree and I have contour mill one and contour mill two. So I'm going to actually right click my contour mill one to edit definition. Now the way that we're able to mill a corner round or a fillet using a 2.5 axis operation is all determined by the tool that we choose. And in this case, we are limited in, in that we have to choose a corner round tool to be able to achieve this tool path. So inside of my mill tool tab, I want to navigate over to my tool crib. I'm going to check to see if I have any corner rounds in here, and I don't currently. So from library on the left hand side, I want to select add. From tool type, I'm going to select my corner round. And this is going to show me all of the corner round tools that I have in my default tool library. So for our first fillet, we're going to want to select our quarter inch corner round tool, our tool number two. I'll press OK. Now this has added the tool into my crib, but I have to actually select it physically and then press select from the left hand side under tools to make sure that it becomes the active tool. I can see that it has become the active tool because we've now jumped back into our first tab here and I can see corner round indicated in the top left. Now I can press OK and we're going to go ahead and edit contour mill 2 in much the same way. We're just going to select a different sized corner round for this operation. So once again, under tool, I'm going to navigate over to tool crib. 
I'm going to select Add from Library on my left-hand side, and I want to find a corner round tool that's going to be able to cut that 3 8 radius. So that, for me, will be tool number three. I press OK to add it into my crib, and then I select it and press Select under Tools from the left-hand side. Now that's become my active tool. I'm going to press OK. Now we have both contour mills how we want them in terms of the tool associated with these paths. I could go in and I could tweak the tool paths a little bit further for my liking, but I'll just show you quickly for the purposes of this demonstration um, how quickly it is to achieve this tool path. So I'm just going to generate what we have here. And if I hover over, I can see there's my corner round toolpath 1 and my corner round toolpath 2. And let's just do a quick simulation so we can see these toolpaths in action. So while inside tool mode, I'm actually going to select to the end of the next toolpath. And let's go ahead and run these. Now that we have our 2.5 axis fillets programmed, let's create a 3 axis operation for them as well. Once again, I'm going to navigate to my SolidWorks CAM feature tree. I'm going to right click my mill part setup 1, but instead of 2.5 axis feature, I'm going to select a multi surface feature. Under feature type, I want to make sure that I select all displayed. This is going to ensure that SolidWorks CAM recognizes every surface on this feature. You can go ahead and press OK. I can see here that the default strategy applied is area clearance and Z level. But instead of generating this operation plan, I'm actually going to add in one three axis mill operation, which is only the Z level. This is a finishing tool path, and for this, I'm going to be choosing a ball nose tool. I want to confirm under my feature tab that indeed I have my multi surface feature one. And now under my tool tab, I can go ahead and I can select any ball nose that I want. And for this demonstration, I'm actually going to go ahead and select tool number eight, which is our half inch ball nose. For operation, I'm going to select use tech DB defaults. I have no other. Z level operation that I can copy parameters from, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the defaults. I can press OK. Now my toolpath is going to open up and I can adjust some parameters if I need to. The first thing I'm going to do is preview the path to see what we have. So I can see here that we have a lot of toolpath that's been created inside of our part, and we have some toolpath on the outside fillet. But I need to make a couple more adjustments before this toolpath is ready to run. So let's go back into our operation parameters. And inside of our limits within our Z level tab, I actually want to adjust my last cut at. I'm going to select user defined. And this is going to allow me to select a pick point, a vertex on my model in which I can say, hey, don't add any toolpath past this point. Uh, because I know my outside fillet is larger than my interior fillet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this corner here. I can press OK, and I'm going to hit Preview to see what we get. Okay, things are looking better, but I want to make a couple more adjustments so that it cuts a lot more of this fillet. So under cut type, Z level, I'm going to adjust my method, which is constant currently, and I'm going to update that to scallop. I'm going to indicate that the amount of material I left behind, my re remaining scallop, I don't want to be larger than 5 thousandths. I'm also going to update my max cut amounts and my min cut amounts too. And lastly, I'm going to delete equal last levels. I'll enter zero there. And I'll preview once again.
one more change, I want to indicate how far I'm going to let my tool travel past my feature. If I go to my advanced tab, I can see here my method is set to all silhouettes, which is fine, but my tool condition is on center. So my tool is actually not allowed to travel past the center of whatever limit I've set for it. In this case, that pick point here. But I'm going to select that my tool can actually travel past. I'm going to go ahead and preview that. And that's looking a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to generate this toolpath. Last thing I'm going to do is simulate that. So in this case, I'm going to actually stick with turbo mode. And I'm going to select to the end of the next toolpath. And there we go. Our internal fillet and our external fillet have both been cut using a three axis operation. Thanks so much for watching.